Well, the armed forces in the United Kingdom have never been as capable as they are, they are now. Uh, they have a tremendous amount of capability, whether that be air, land or sea. Uh, and of course, there are other areas into which we've had to progress in the last few years, notably into space and into cyberspace. Uh, so in all that, I see the, uh, the, the Royal Air Force, the Royal Navy and the Army having developed a position where in the 21st century they are extremely capable. But of course, like any organisation, it can only be as capable as the funding available. And that is always a consequence, therefore, on the total amount of the force that can be deployed. But nevertheless, they have developed enormously since then. Um, as we'll see at Farnborough with the demonstration of the Lightning II, the JSF aircraft, that are coming into service with the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy in the next few years. We are at the leading edge of the technology uh, piece that is coming along to enable our people to have the excitement, the knowledge, but also demand the capability from them to maintain these very, very capable aeroplanes and very expensive aeroplanes, of course. Equally, of course, what we've got is the ability to make sure that we attract the most people from the science, technology, uh, engineering uh, world, of course, but those who want to be involved in the operational sense, of course, is where the armed forces look. But I have to say, industry has done very well for us over the years in developing the people who are prepared to work for them and maintain and develop these systems uh, alongside the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy uh, and the Army Air Corps to make sure that we have got that capability uh, overall. Uh, the Royal Air Force, uh, as well as many other air forces, not least of which the United States Air Force, has of course been the leading edge of the development of synthetics for the benefit of training and development of operational capability. Uh, since 1994, we've had an enormous variety of new synthetics being delivered, everything from operational battlefields, which the uh, entire army uh, headquarters, the brigade headquarters from going to Afghanistan and Iraq, the Royal Air Force squadrons going out there, and the Royal Marines units have all gone through since before they would go out to, uh, to the theatre. So the synthetic world is right here and right up to including the very highest level of operational training. The current requirement is to look and see how we can now further develop that so that we can be absolutely in a position to say that we have looked at synthetically every aspect of what we should be doing in the armed forces and that they're ready to make sure that they can then deliver those uh, capabilities based on the training and the best possible uh, synthetic training that we can give them before they actually go and deploy. It will never replace the actual moment of when people go to combat. And the idea that this is something that can therefore replace live training is, I think, a fallacy and will remain so. Because it's never quite the same as when you're there looking across the battlefield at your enemy.